Come home to Jesus. This is the message that Max Solbrechen has proclaimed for 50 years to multitudes across the world. His crusades have taken him to the Hindus of India, Muslims of Pakistan, Buddhists of Sri Lanka, voodoo worshippers of Haiti, Catholics of Malta, and headhunters of northern Luzon. He has preached God's Word in stadiums, churches, tents, universities, and prisons. He comes to you today with the message of God's love and power. The man who is not afraid to preach the truth, Pastor Max Solbrechen. Hello, my name is Max Solbrechen, and I'm a man of God. I've preached the gospel. I believe the Word of God is the Word of God, holy, perfect, without error. And I want to read from the Bible, the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 14 to 18, as follows in Jesus' name. For he, that's Christ, Jesus Christ, is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Speaking about Jews and Gentiles, there is a wall of partition, and between us and God. First of all, between us and God, and then us and others. For he, that's Jesus Christ, is our peace, who hath made both one, Gentiles, Greeks, Jews, coming together as one man, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. For to make of himself of twain one new man, so make he peace. When Christ comes into us, he changes us. The old man dies. The old man comes to life. He's the only one who can do that, who can change me, change you, and take us from the old man, nature, and make us his child, a son of God, by adoption. And to take different nationalities, different religions, Jews and Gentiles, both coming together as one man in Christ. It's a miracle of God. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, Jesus, by dying on the cross, he abolished the enmity and the Bible says that he abolished even the law of commandments containing ordinances to make, to make in himself of twain, one new man, so making peace. We would have peace in this world today if everyone would come to Christ. Because when he comes in, he changes us, brings his love and his compassion and his joy and his peace. He brings new life. He gives us eternal life. And when he does that, we are changed and we, we love our brothers, our sisters, even our enemies. So Jesus Christ is our peace. Christ is our peace, our joy, our hope, our strength, our health. He is life. He is our life. And he's in our abundance. He's our wisdom our understanding, our knowledge, because everything we receive from Christ is what we need. Because without him, we would be lost, unclean and on our way to perdition, to a lost eternity. But Christ makes the difference. So it says here, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, by the cross. It's through the cross of Christ. The central theme of this world should be the cross. That's the central theme of the Word of God, of the Bible, the cross. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. How could you ever make it, how could I ever make it, if Jesus Christ had not come down to this sin-cursed world, and died upon an old rugged cross where he would pay for the price, pay the price for our sins, for our fears, for our sicknesses, our diseases, 
and all of the things that we, the baggage we have, because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's not one that's perfect. No, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But when Jesus Christ came and he died on that rugged cross, every sin you committed was nailed to him to that cross. And so he has slain the enmity on the cross. The cross is the answer. The answer to our personal needs, the answer to our social needs, the answer to the needs of nations. People, whenever you have people, you have problems. Nations, difficulties between nations, wars, all kinds of problems, economic problems, social problems. And now, so many of our young people lost because they know not Christ and they've gone the way of the world. But the cross, the cross is a place where we come to unload our baggage, to give him our lives. If you want to get rid of your greatest problem, my friend, give yourself away. Give yourself to Jesus. You see, we can't forgive our own sins. We can't heal our own bodies. We can't deliver ourselves. But you see, he can do it for us because he did it for us already when he took our place. I should have been crucified. I should have suffered. I should have bled. I should have died. I should have hung upon that cross in sin and disgrace. But Jesus, God's son, took my place. The hymn writer said it so well. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And there, there we come because he took our place. He settled the sin question for us. So I'll cherish that old rugged cross. I'll cherish that old rugged cross till at last my trophies, at last I lay down. I will cling to that old rugged cross and exchange it someday, one day, for a crown. I used to wonder about that word, those words, till my trophies at last I lay down. In the old Lutheran church, we would sing this hymn, and I'd wonder, what does that mean? I was an athlete. You know, you get trophies when you win a, a race or a game. Lord, what? did the hymn writer mean when my trophies at last I lay down? And then it came to me, the souls that we win for Jesus, the souls we bring to him are our trophies and we lay them down at the cross. We give him all the glory and all the praise. It says here, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity. The enmity meaning that there was a battle between us and God, a battle between us and our fellow man. But the cross destroyed the enmity. The cross made things right between us and God. Because you see, when the hammer fell, when Jesus Christ hung on that cross and the hammer fell, the judgment of God, it hit Jesus. I should have been judged, but he took my place. And he took away the enmity. The battle that was going on in my own soul between right and wrong. The battle in my own spirit between myself and God. Between myself and my fellow man. He slew the enmity. He destroyed it. And he made out of me a new man and made Jews and Gentiles, all, sinners all, becoming one man in Christ, that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you that were far off and to them that were nigh, for through him, through Christ, we both, Jews and Gentiles, believers, since we've accepted Christ, have access by one spirit unto the Father. 
Here we find the Trinity. Through Him, Jesus Christ, we both, all believers, whether it be Jews and Gentiles, Romans, Greeks, whoever, black, white, red, yellow, brown, Roman Catholic, Catholic, Lutheran, Pentecostal, everyone coming to the cross. And when we come to the cross, all that enmity is gone. The hatred we might have one for another, the prejudice we have, they're destroyed by the cross, by the blood. That's what the United Nations needs today. That's what they need in the Middle East. You see, Jesus Christ is our peace. There's totally, without doubt, we know that all these Islamists, they don't have any peace. Their God doesn't bring any peace because Islam has always been known as the religion of the sword. But Christianity is the religion of the cross where we die. Christ died for us and we die to ourselves and we begin to love one another. So here it is. Through Jesus Christ, we both, Jews and Gentiles, believers, have access by one Spirit, the Holy Spirit, unto the Father. Oh, what a joy it is to know that He loves us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Well, today, something very special. A special guest from the Camrose area, going way, way back to 1966, Lanny, God bless you. Well, thank you. It's so nice to have you with us. Lanny Hagen, that's a Norwegian name. It is, yes. Can du snakke norsk? No. <laughs> you can't no speak snark Norwegian. Norsk, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, but your mom and dad were both Norwegians? Oh, uh, yeah. My father actually uh, spoke Norwegian, didn't speak English until he went to school. Really? And, uh, but he could speak it, and uh, when he retired, yes. he went to university. I think he was like uh, in his early 70s, late 60s. Sure. And, uh, and learned to write and read. He learned how to write and yeah. read in Norwegian. Yeah, that's uh, so that was kind of interesting. I never picked it up. I'm not a, really a good linguist. You know, the amazing thing is that, you see, when my parents came from Norway in 19, uh, 1900 and, uh, and uh, 27, they came to Norway, uh, from Norway to Canada, settled in Saskatchewan, mm -hmm. Norco Saskatchewan, and you know, when I was number five, so my older brother, my older sister, they didn't know any English at all. Mm -hmm. uh, they came here, of course, they were two and six months. Well, when we started school, I, I think I knew English by that time because my older siblings had taught me English. Yeah. So mom and dad, they learned English from us. We learned Norwegian from them. Yeah. <laughs> but in 1968, I went to Norway, and I went in 67 on my way to India. But in 68, we went for crusades. I had to l learn the real Norwegian because I was speaking Svinglish or <laughs> Minnesota Norsk. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And with, with, the, with the dialect. But uh, then I had to learn to read and write. And so, uh, but it's a great language. Anyway, you live in a place called Dried Meat Lake. Yes. Alberta. Just south of Camrose, about 15 minutes. 15 yeah. minutes south of Camrose. And it's actually a widening in the Battle River. It goes for several miles, and, and we live at a place called Tilikum Beach. Tilikum Beach. Yeah. And that's a native, it's a Cree. Yeah, I think so. Word, yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure. Are there many people living in that area? Uh, I'd hate to hazard a guess because I don't know the exact, it's, uh, I think it has Samlet status now. It's, there's about 200 people living in well, that, yeah. No, but you were born in the Camrose area. I was, uh, southeast of Camrose in a place called Forestburg. Yeah, and that's where I was raised. And that's a real Norwegian area, uh, Forestburg. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So tell me, um, you've been in radio for many, many years. 
I spent 30 years in radio. Uh, started out in Lloyd Minster and came to Camrose for about 12 years. And sure. worked right across uh, Western Canada. I worked in Vancouver and uh, Calgary, Edmonton, Saskatoon, Regina, and a few small places in between. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. So what you were in uh, uh, in broad broadcasting, you were, and what all did you do for at the radio stations? Mainly announcing and M mainly announcing. Mainly yeah, announcing. Yeah. In the later years, I got into uh, management, and uh, I was a music director for a while, the program director, and sure. uh, general manager, and then I got into something else. <laughs> sure. Are you musical yourself? Do you play anything? Uh, no, I'm, I have a year, but I don't. I, I don't play anything, and I don't. Uh, I'm, not, I'm a terrible singer. But a I, good I, ear for music. Yeah. 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 You have to be to be a music director. So. I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. But now, my whole family was musical. Right. They, they all played and did all kinds of things. I don't know wh where I was when that was handed out, but it missed me. But God <laughs> gave you the voice. He did. He gave you yeah. a tremendous voice. You yeah, had a thank great you. voice. Thank you. Tell me, Lanny, we met in 1966. Yeah, we did. Uh, in, in, in the studios at CFCW, actually. In the studios at CFCW. You know, I had been in my World Crusades in 66, three and a half months in Asia and the Orient. Mm -hmm. And I came back, and I guess I must have been in the Edmonton area, and I came over to Radio CFCW mm -hmm. to... Uh, Produce some programs. Right, I remember that. I, that's where uh, that's where you uh, performed the healing on me, or yeah. you laid hands on me yeah. in the name of Christ, and yeah. that was 48 years ago. So it's not amazing. Now tell me a little bit about your problem, because well, first of all, you were actually um, I was producing programs because mm -hmm. I was on every day, 50 minutes a day. That's right. And 30 minutes on Sunday, CFCW cameras. And you were actually recording me. I was, yeah, that was part of my job. Was uh, I, I, I did the uh, afternoon show and then I hung around in the evening and in the evening after, after seven o'clock, well, we, we did a lot of religious programming. Sure. And it was all taped. Uh, a lot of it was just taped elsewhere and sent in. Yeah. But you used to come into the studio and then I'd have a tape on and I'd run out and we'd, uh, we'd tape your program. Yes. And I happened to mention to you uh, one evening that I was having some problems with my kidneys, and, uh, and you laid your hands on me, and, and the rest is history. God did the miracle. He did. But listen, Lenny, it's amazing. Now, tell me and all these folks that are watching, what was wrong with your kidney? Oh, okay. Uh, well, I was diagnosed in, uh, in, in the spring and summer area of 1966 as having an abnormal kidney that wasn't functioning properly. Yeah. So I was in a lot of pain at the time. I had just passed a kidney stone. But this particular kidney had given me trouble throughout my years. I get colds and uh, sure. infections and stuff in it. So I'm in the University Hospital uh, being sent there from Camrose yes. to have it checked out. And, uh, and they, they did some x-rays and found that it was, it was in need of some a possibility of even a transplant at the time, and it scared me a lot. Yes. <laughs> uh, after a few tests, so they decided uh, the the doctor in charge decided that he would do a uh, an operation on it instead because he thought he could save it. How could he do that? What would he do? Well, he, well, I don't really know all the details, but uh, what I remember is that uh, we would remove the kidney and cut it open, and it was uh, he was going to do something to it. I mean. It reorganize was, it somehow. Yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, I do, know, I do know it was a fairly serious operation that I was facing. So, but now you had a very famous doctor, Doctor Lakey was the. That's right. Yeah. He was the surgeon who did the first kidney transplant in Alberta. That's correct. Yeah. And he was your doctor. He was. Yeah, and what did he tell you your chances were? What did he say? Uh, you know, I, I'm not quite sure if I remember what he said. My chances were. Uh, uh, he believed uh, it would be a successful operation. Oh, I, oh, I think he thought he could. He, 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 to, uh, he could he fix told, it. Oh, yeah. He said he could fix it. It was going to be. So he scheduled the operation for the the uh, spring of uh, of '67. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And in between, then that's when I when I talked to you and you laid hands on me yes. and prayed for me. 
And I thank you for that. Yep. And I thank God. And yes. I, and I thank Jesus Christ. By, uh, now, here, here's, the th here's the thing that you, uh, you were quite nervous about the operation. Oh, yes. And yeah. you told me about your dilemma. And so I said, well, I can pray for you. Yeah, right now, you said. <laughs> yeah, right now. <laughs> That's the old Norwegian in me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not going to waste any time on this guy. <laughs> and so I, I, I laid my hands upon you and prayed that God would heal your kidney. That's great. Yeah. And did you believe at that time? Uh, no, at the time I was I wasn't a believer. I had grown up in church, but I, I kind of drifted away. Sure. And I really wasn't. Uh, I, I really wasn't sure. But you did want me to pray for you. Yes, I did. I asked you to do that. Yes, you asked and, me to pray uh, for you, and I did. And then afterwards, you mentioned that whenever my program would come on, you'd lay your hand on the cabinet. Yeah, that's right. Read your cabinet. Yeah, I did. I prayed along with you for, yeah. for quite a, for, for that winter. I think it was somewhere, I, I'm not sure even of whether the season, because it's so long ago, 48 years. And yeah. So, but right. Yeah. And, and I, then when you came in to have the operation, what happened? Well, they did some more tests because uh, I guess after a, the, the time period was like from almost a year and so they ran a bunch of tests on me again and came to the conclusion I uh, was quite uh, Dr. Lakey was amazed yes and uh, he said I can't believe that you're this isn't the same kidney this is not the same kidney no, this is, well it's something like that yeah, yeah. you know like uh, and he was totally surprised as, as I was because yes. I wasn't a hundred percent sure of this whole thing I didn't you know the, the world didn't move and I didn't uh, I just I just went on with my life, and yeah. I haven't had a problem in that in that area for uh, 48 years. So not one. Not one problem. Not one. And you were telling me that the rest of your body is falling to pieces, but not <laughs> your kidneys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I guess we all I guess we all get there, don't we? But your kidneys have been perfect. Perfect. And he was shocked when he looked at it. You were oh, puzzled. He was puzzled. Oh, absolutely surprised. And he totally. canceled everything, and yeah. you. He and said. He, he said your kidney was better than normal. That's right, he did. He, I remember that. He said that uh, it was functioning above normal. 98%. That, something like that, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Because uh, kidneys don't usually No, they function. don't function at that level. No. No, but it was, it was going, going good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, that without, was and without pain. Without no pain at all. No pain at all. Well, to God be the glory. Yeah, for sure. Yes, amen. Oh, I praise the Lord. Yeah. We're going to just... Uh, I'm going to offer this to the people. I have uh, some magazines here that that uh, you can write for because they're very powerful. And uh, if you would just, uh, uh, you'll get our address at the end of the program and you can uh, write for these. They're absolutely free. And uh, I'm going to pray now for you, my friend. If you are sick in your body, God can heal you. If you're not sure that you're saved, you can give your heart to Christ. Mm -hmm. There'll be no better time than right now to say yes to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He said, come unto me, all you labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. But before I pray, I want to ask you, Lanny, when did you give your heart to Christ then? Uh, actually, I could remember it. It was in 1994 in Regina, Saskatchewan. And how did that happen? Well, it was a lady that was, uh, we were living in a condominium on the south end of Regina. Uh, I was still working in radio. And, and we had this very wonderful lady uh, uh, living across the hall from us. Sure. And, and uh, I think she sensed I was troubled. You know, yeah. I, I was. When you're not with God, you're. you're you are you're, troubled. Yeah. You are troubled. There's no question about it. And and so she had us over for coffee and cake and, and yes. prayed for us. Yes. And and we, we started going to church again and uh, and that's how it happened. So from '68 to '94, all those years, we were kind of sort mm -hmm. of. But you still, you knew you had a miracle. Oh yes. And you would always remember that miracle, wouldn't oh, you? Oh, I did, yeah. Actually, it's, that was part of the reason that I, I could uh, accept Christ. That's as my part savior. of the reason why you accepted Christ. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. and that Praise had, the Lord. had a lot to do with it. Yes. You know, I had evidence. <laughs> you had the evidence. <laughs> That's right. And Have I got that kind of a mind, you know, it's just like, uh, show me, 
I'm from Missouri. <laughs> yeah, one of those old yeah. Norwegians. Like yeah, so. <laughs> when I first went to Norway and I preached in Valdres in my home province in Nor where my parents came from, yeah. I remember I had preached a very powerful message. And the Lutheran church was too small, so we used the community center. And uh, I preached about hell, fire, and brimstone <laughs> to those old Norwegians. <laughs> And uh, they don't like that. Uh, it involved us. Yeah. And the next morning, I talked to my uncle Fritjof, and he said, "He said, Max, we don't have that kind of preaching up here." He said. <laughs> he, I said, uh, Uncle Fritjof, you are a soul breaker, and so am I. You're older than my dad. I said, so you, therefore, you're the king of the soul breaker clan, and you're a farmer, and you're a timber man. I'm not going to tell you how to cut timber or make lumber, but I'm a preacher, and you're not going to tell me how to preach. <laughs> well, he said, we'll see what happens tonight. So I preached that night. I preached that night, and the power of God came down, and we had 300 people in the service in that community. And it, not a town, not even a village. It was a community. Yeah. But 300 people, and when I made the altar call, 150 stood up to receive Christ. Hallelujah. And then I asked, how many relatives do I have? And 150 rose. <laughs> I had reached my relatives. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> and so the next morning, I, the next morning, I went to see my uncle, Fritjof. Yeah. And he said, oh, I heard the phone has been ringing all morning. You had a great service last night. <laughs> I said, Fritjof, what about you? Are you right with God? Would you like to get right with God? And I noticed some tears began to trickle down his face, and he said, yes. He was a tough guy. He was the kind of a guy, show me, kind of a guy, you know. He was the fellow who thought he could make things work without God. He said, yes. So I knelt beside him and prayed the sinner's prayer, and he prayed it. And the amazing thing, Lanny, is a few years later, he was dying in the hospital in Littlehammer. Mm -hmm. And my uncle Fritjo was in the hospital in Little Hammer, and he was dying. He was in a coma. And all of a sudden, a miracle happened. He sat up in the coma. He lifted up both of his arms as high as he could, and he shouted, Hallelujah! No, pardon me. He shouted, Jesus! There's one word, Jesus! And they laid back down, and he died. Oh, for goodness. The doctors had come running, and the nurses, and the people. And they seen, people had seen this, others in the, yeah. in the room, in the ward. God wanted me to know, and everyone else, that he had made it. Yeah, that's nice. My uncle yeah. Fritjof, if you would like to give your heart to Christ, my dear friend, why don't you pray this prayer after me now? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come into thy presence and I ask for thy mercy and thy grace and thy goodness. Be merciful to me, O God, for I am a sinner, a sinner by birth, a sinner by nature, a sinner by choice. But, O oh Lord, God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will forgive me and cleanse me. I do believe that Jesus Christ died for me upon the cross. He took my place. He shed his blood for me, and then he was buried in a tomb, and he arose from the dead. And I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me for Christ's sake. And I do receive you now as my Lord and Savior, my Master and my God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, then your sins are gone. Your sins are washed away. For him that cometh unto me, Jesus said, I will no wise cast out. I'm going to pray for you if you're sick in your body. 
I'm going to take Lanny. Would you take my hand, Lanny? Sure. Let's pray together, shall we? Okay. For these people. Father, I pray now. I stretch forth my hand towards those who are sick and suffering. I pray, God, that you will heal. I pray now, Father, that you will touch every man and woman and child. And upon the authority of God's word, in the name of Jesus, I command every evil spirit to leave you, my friend, to leave. In Jesus' name, every sickness, every disease must leave. I pray, Father, that you will heal. Stretch forth your hand, O God, and heal. Jesus, heal the sick, fill with the Holy Spirit, baptize with fire and power. And, O God, I ask you for your mercy for all the people that are watching here in Camrose, Alberta, and across the world by Internet. We pray, O oh God, a blessing upon each one for Christ's sake and for God's glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with each one until Jesus comes. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee. Give thee peace. The Lord strengthen thee. The Lord heal thee, prosper thee, protect thee, and watch over thee, and give thee great joy. For Christ's sake, Amen. And amen. For 50 years, Pastor Max Solbrecken has awakened the conscience of his audiences through the anointed proclamation of the claims of Christ who said, No man can serve two masters. You cannot serve God and mammon. The truth is, you are either for him or against him. You cannot remain neutral. Great costs are involved in spreading of Christ's gospel. Please consider investing in this ministry. Contact Max Solbrecken at MSWM, Box 44220, RPO, Garside, Edmonton, Alberta, T5V1N6, Canada. been watching the Come Home to Jesus television ministry with Canada's preacher man, Dr. Max Solbrecken, who has proclaimed the Word of God across the world for 50 years without fear or favor of man or devil. Ask for Canada's revival magazine, The Cry of His Coming, when you write. Invest in souls by supporting this end-time ministry. Please contact Max Solbrecken at MSWM, Box 44220, RPO, Garside, Edmonton, Alberta, T5V1N6, Canada. Oh, die again and...